As soon as Florida and Georgia wrap up in Jacksonville, your attention should immediately shift to South Bend, where we have another top 10 matchup between the top-ranked Clemson Tigers and the fourth-ranked Notre Dame Fighting Irish. So welcome back to the Gridiron Expert, breaking down our second game of the week between the Tigers and the Fighting Irish. A game that has major ACC title implications and a game that, of course, has major college football playoff implications as well. So we're here to break down the history, some key stats, the offense, the defense, the keys to the game, and who we have winning in South Bend on Saturday night. So let's quickly take a look at a little bit of history here. Uh, These two teams have not met much. I think they've met maybe four times. Uh, in their program's history, but obviously they have met a little bit more in recent years, with Clemson winning both of those. The Tigers won the Thriller back in 2015 at Clemson in Death Valley, taking down the Fighting Irish 24-22, the famous bring-your-own-guts game, as Dabo Swinney kind of named it. So that was obviously a Thriller back in 2015, a result there uh, that I think will be very similar to what we see on this Saturday. Maybe not in favor of the Tigers, uh, but at least in terms of how close it is and how competitive it is. Because I don't think this game on Saturday is going to be like the college football playoff matchup we saw just a few years ago. Back in 2018, Clemson annihilated the undefeated Fighting Irish 30-3 in that college football playoff semifinal game at the Cotton Bowl. I would not expect a result similar to that on Saturday. It's going to be very hard fought. I think it's going to be very close. And it has a chance to be relatively low scoring, kind of like we saw back in 2015. So keep that in mind as we approach this game on Saturday. Another thing you want to look at here. I've heard people say, does this game matter? And every time they say that, it blows my mind. Of course this game matters. But I also kind of get what they're saying. This is the top ranked team in the country and the fourth ranked team in the country. They're both undefeated. Someone's going to lose. But just because someone loses here, the loser of this game is not eliminated from ACC title contention, and they are not eliminated from college football playoff contention. That is, of course, assuming that the game is close. If we have a one-possession game here, regardless of who wins, neither of these two teams, whoever loses, is going to fall that much in the rankings. At least I wouldn't think they would. And they certainly have a chance to work their way back up in the rankings and contend for the playoff, because there's a very good chance that these two teams will meet again in a few weeks in the ACC title game. So yes, it matters. The winner owns that upper hand where maybe they could afford a loss in the ACC title game and still get in the playoff, assuming it's their only loss. The loser, the room for error is small, but their title hopes and everything like that are still not over. Clemson enters this game against the Fighting Irish as a five-point favorite. Five-point favorite. We're going to get into why that's interesting and why that's a big deal here in a second. But the Tigers, five-point favorites going into South Bend. Again, that spread brought to you by BetNow.eu. Go check out their link down in our description below. We have enjoyed partnering with BetNow uh, for over a year now. It's a place where we go to place all of our bets for any type of sporting event. If you use their link, our link down in the description, our promo code GRIDIRON as well, you get a 100% sign-up bonus and a $1,000 cash sign-up bonus as well. So I really don't know what could be better than that. So bet now, certainly the place to go. Tigers favored by five. And our pick for this game, our against the spread pick for the Tigers and the Fighting Irish, that is over on our website, thegridironexpert.com. Sign up for those expert picks. We're on a hot streak right now, and I can promise you do not want to miss our spread picks going in to week 10. So let's take a look at the offenses here. Let's take a look at both sides of the ball. We're going to start with the Tigers. We always, again, uh, kind of give preference to the road team, just to be polite. And we're going to start with the top-ranked team in the country. And the biggest storyline, as we all know going into this game, is that Clemson will be without their star quarterback, the best quarterback in the country, in Trevor Lawrence. Trevor Lawrence will not be playing in this game. He did not play last week either, though. And that, to me, is a huge benefit for the Tigers, because T.J. Uwe Ungolale got to play against Boston College, and granted, that game against Boston College was closer 
that I think anybody wanted it to be. But Uyunglele got to go in there and get a full game experience in a close game, I should add. And that's going to really pay off big time for Clemson in this game. Better than if Lawrence had played against Boston College, then gotten COVID, and uh, DJ Uyunglele had to deal with uh, three or four days of practice before going into the biggest game of the year. He's had a lot of time to prep. He's got a full game under his belt. He's only making his second career start, but that game against Boston College was huge. And he performed very well in that game. 342 passing yards and two touchdowns in that one. Keep in mind, he can make some plays with his feet, with his legs as well. Major question is, can DJ Uyunglele do it again? Can he live up to the hype? Can he have another outstanding performance again on the road against a top four team in the country, the biggest game of the year with every eye in the country on you, the spotlight on you? We're going to touch more on that when we break down the defenses. When you look at Clemson as a whole, their offense is, as we all know, one of the best in the country. They're averaging 46.1 points per game. They're averaging 508 yards per game. And yes, not having Trevor Lawrence is going to hurt, but Trevor Lawrence is not necessarily this entire team. Keep in mind that Clemson may have the best running back in the country in Travis Etienne, a guy that might play a bigger role in this game, a guy that might have to take over the offense in this game. ETN, 606 yards and nine touchdowns on the year, and he's definitely a threat in the passing game as well. 434 reception yards in 2020, had 140 of those last week against Boston College, and that's to be expected. When you're dealing with a new quarterback uh, and a young quarterback, your running back is your best friend. Not only can you hand it off to him to take some pressure off of you, but you can dump it off to him as much as you want. And Uyungo Ole did that quite a bit. ETN is great at racking up yards after the catch. And you can expect to try to see more of that in South Bend on Saturday, especially considering that outside of Amari Rogers, Clemson's top wide receiver, the Tigers practically have no pass catchers. Amari Rogers is it. I know they've got other wide receivers out there, but he's the biggest, and he's the one that contributes the most. Joseph Nagata has not performed the way that I think anyone really thought going into 2020. This Clemson wide receiver core is not what it used to be. It's not like the wide receiver cores we've seen in years past. And if they don't step up, if some unknown hero doesn't step up in this game, it could be difficult for Clemson to move the ball if Notre Dame's defense steps up and lives up to the challenge. And again, we'll talk on the Fighting Irish defense here in a second. Let's talk about Notre Dame. Let's talk about the Fighting Irish offense here. They're averaging 34.8 points per game. So they're not as high scoring. They're not as flashy. Uh, They're not as, I would say, have that big play capability as Clemson does. But what Notre Dame does have is efficiency and balance. Notre Dame, to me, is one of the most efficient offenses in the country this season. 206.2 206.2 passing yards per game this year, 231 rushing yards per game this year. That is the number that sticks out the most to me. That's the number that I think is the most impressive to me. The running game, led by Kyron Williams, 600 yards and seven touchdowns on the year. If you look at his stats and Travis Etienne's stats, they are practically identical, identical from the amount of carries they've gotten, from the yards they've put up, from the touchdowns they've put up. They are practically identical. Not saying they're the same player. I think ETN still owns that edge, but Williams has been a very nice surprise and a huge boost to this fighting Irish offense. We do know, though, that outside of Williams, obviously a very big player and a guy that Notre Dame has relied heavily on this year, outside of him, the undisputed leader of Notre Dame is Ian Book, the quarterback. Ian Book has not really put up the numbers I think we expected again this year. Uh, He's been a little bit lackluster. But he's done fine. Only one interception, and that's another number that sticks out to me, the fact that he takes very good care of the football. Just one interception, he has over 1,200 yards and seven touchdowns on the year. And again, kind of like Uyunga Lale, uh, Ian Book, we don't think about him much as a runner, uh, but he has proven to us that he can put up quite a bit of yards on the ground as well. And that could be a threat here uh, against this Clemson defense. So Notre Dame's offense... Again, not as explosive, not as exciting, not as electric, but they're efficient. And in a game like this, one that's going to be one in the trenches, one that's going to be, I think, relatively low scoring, one where you're going to struggle to move the ball for both teams. The more efficient offense might have the edge there. I would give that edge right now to Notre Dame 
even though I think Clemson has that more big play ability. Something to keep in mind as we go in to Saturday night. Defensively, we praise both run games here. We, the quarterback battle is obviously an interesting one to watch, but the run games are ones that I think could take over in this game, ones that are going to be relied on heavily in this game. Problem is, both Clemson and Notre Dame have fantastic rushing defenses, and we'll break down how those teams are going to get around those obstacles in our keys to the game, but with Clemson, the Tigers are allowing 15.6 points per game and just 274.7 total yards per game. Again, I think if you're allowing under 300 yards per game on the year on average, I think you're doing a great job. I think it's very, very impressive if you can allow under 300 yards per game. Clemson and Notre Dame are both doing that. The Tigers are allowing 99.9 rushing yards per game. So they are staying out of those triple digits, 999 uh, 99.9 rushing yards per game this year. Again, might prove to be a tough day for Kyron Williams. If he can't get anything going against this Tigers defense, especially up along that defensive line, what is Ian Book going to have to do? Or how does Notre Dame find a way to get Kyron Williams involved, maybe not just on blatant run plays? Another thing to point out for Clemson's defense, we know Brent Venables, one of the best if not the best, defensive mind and defensive coordinator in the entire game. We knew Clemson was going to be very multiple this year. We've seen that. They've done a great job with that. The Tigers have forced 13 turnovers in 2020. Up there is one of the best marks in the entire country. That's a big key in this one. 13 turnovers for the season. If they can win the turnover battle, Clemson will win this game. It'll be interesting to see a Notre Dame team that does a very good job of taking care of the football, how do they fare against a team that's one of the best in taking the football away? Notre Dame, their defense, believe it or not, is even better than Clemson's. And after looking at those stats, that's a very tough thing to do. But the Fighting Irish are allowing just 10.3 points per game. Less than two touchdowns per game. And their rushing defense is even better than Clemson's allowing just 93.7 rushing yards per game. So again, that poses the question, will Travis Etienne get anything going? Can he find success on the ground? Can DJ Uyunglele find success on a QB keeper or when he chooses to scramble? That is going to be a key against this Notre Dame defense, one that, unlike Clemson, hasn't really turned uh, forced many turnovers, only seven on the year for the Fighting Irish, but... Notre Dame does a fantastic job of pressuring the quarterback, the Fighting Irish, 17 sacks in 2020, averaging nearly three sacks per game. Again, Notre Dame, pretty solid offensive line. That defensive line, that front seven, doing very well very well for Clark Lee's defense as well. So a lot of big numbers there for Notre Dame. Clemson doing a better job of taking the ball away. Notre Dame doing a better job of creating pressure uh, and obviously slowing other teams down. Those num- those numbers speak for themselves. Notre Dame owns that defensive edge, at least when you look at the statistics. So what are the keys to the game? What are going to be the keys to the game? Number one, number four. I mean, this is a big, big deal. Don't believe the guys that say it's not that big a deal or it doesn't really matter what the result is because they're going to meet again and that will be the game that matters the most. It's not true because we don't know what's going to happen to these two two teams leading up to the ACC championship game. One could get upset. One could lose. We could see more injuries. Who knows? More COVID outbreaks. You never know what could happen. This is a big game. It sets the tone for the rest of the ACC, for the rest of the year, and for the college football playoff race. Clemson, their key is relatively obvious. You know, we could come out here and say, well, their key is they need good play out of DJ Ungalale. Well, yeah, everybody knows that. Everybody knows that he needs to go into South Bend, his second career start, a hostile environment, a game like this, and he has to play well. If he doesn't, Notre Dame loses. We know, all right, Clemson loses. We know that. Let's go a little deeper. One thing Clemson has to do is they have to protect Uwe Ungolay. They've got to give him time to throw. If he wants to run, uh, give him holes to run with. Uwe Ungolale played great against Boston College last week. No disrespect to him. No disrespect to Boston College. He did extremely well in his first career start. But again, we just mentioned that Notre Dame has a fantastic pass rush. 17 sacks this season. Clemson has allowed 11 sacks 
this season. The Tigers have allowed 11. So their offensive line hasn't been nearly as good as people thought it would be. Uh, it hasn't been nearly as impressive as it has been in years past. And keep in mind, for Clemson, Notre Dame is their toughest test they faced all year. Notre Dame is going to field the best athletes that they have faced all year. Same goes for the Fighting Irish. So if Clemson up front is not prepared for this Notre Dame pass rush, if the Fighting Irish get back there and can rattle Uwe Ungalale early, it could be a long day. Again, a hostile environment in South Bend, a place where Notre Dame has won 22 straight games. The Fighting Irish, 22 straight home games that they've won, 12 straight games total that they've won, is going to be very tough for Clemson's quarterback. Another thing that Clemson has to do, they've got to stay disciplined. And I really only touch on this because of what happened last week. The Tigers, I know they had defensive starters out. I know that Trevor Lawrence was out. I get it, but you're still a top-ranked team in the country. Good teams find a way to win. Clemson did just that. But they've got to be better in terms of the penalties. Nine penalties for 82 yards, some proving to be very costly, such as the offsides call, where it looked like Boston College was going to line up for a field goal. Instead, they ran up under center, drew the Tigers offsides, and they got a touchdown out of it to take a 28-10 lead. Roughing the passer calls. They catch some, caught some drives alive. So you look at all of those things there. Nine penalties for 82 yards. It's unacceptable. That's not a Dabo Swinney, uh, you know, very light Clemson team. That, that, that doesn't happen. So you've got to do better, especially on the road. You make some unforced errors. You make some dumb penalties. You, you're not going to win. You're also not going to win if you can't win the turnover battle. Clemson has to win the turnover battle. They've done a great job taking the ball away this year. Notre Dame has done a great job protecting it. What is going to give? So Clemson. Protect Uyunglele, stay disciplined, no unforced errors, no, don't shoot yourself in the foot, and then win that turnover battle. For Notre Dame, kind of conversely to what we just said about Clemson, protect, or excuse me, pressure DJ Uyunglele. Get after him. He's making his second career start. He's coming into your house at night, top four showdown. They've allowed 11 sacks. You have 17. Go get him. Pressure him, hit him, pop him, make him know. You know, you're not in Death Valley anymore. You're in South Bend. So go get after him. Pressure DJ Uangola. Even if you don't take him down, you force incomplete passes, you force a couple bad throws. Keep in mind, he's just a freshman. I know he's a good freshman, but freshmen do make mistakes that veteran quarterbacks such as Ian Book or Trevor Lawrence wouldn't make under normal circumstances. You make him into some bad decisions. Maybe Notre Dame gets a couple interceptions. Maybe they force a fumble. They win that turnover battle. They win. So pressure DJ Uyunga Olay. You've done so good at that. And also, two other things. First, shut down Amari Rodgers. You pressure their quarterback. You shut down Amari Rodgers. You take away Clemson's offense because Travis Etienne, again, cannot win this game by himself. Neither running back can win the game by themselves with the way these rushing defenses are playing. You're going to have to have some unsung heroes. You're going to have to have some surprises. You're going to have to have some great games from your quarterbacks. Because your running backs, yeah, they're going to be involved. They're going to try to get them going. They're probably going to play a bigger role in the passing game than they are on just normal run plays. If you shut down Amari Rodgers, Clark Lee, a great defensive mind. I'm really excited to watch him go up against Brent Venables. But you shut down Amari Rodgers. You pressure the quarterback. You stifle Travis Etienne. Where does Clemson go from there? There's not much room to go. And then finally, for Notre Dame, start strong. That is something that the Fighting Irish have struggled with all season long. If you come out sluggish at home against the top-ranked team in the country and you find yourselves down early, a decent amount early, it's not going to be looking good. And I and I look at other games. Look, last week against Georgia Tech, Notre Dame only led by 10 points at halftime. Georgia Tech's not a good team. They've improved, but Notre Dame obviously had the talent gap. And they won. They won, what, 38-13? They pulled away in the second half. They started off slow. Louisville, they struggled the entire game. Only beat the Cardinals by five in South Bend. Florida State, they trailed by seven. They trailed by three, 17-14. After one quarter, they were only up nine early in the third quarter. Duke, the season opener, they only led 10-6 at halftime over the Blue Devils. You can see where I'm going with this. All four of those teams we just mentioned are bigger, inferior opponents, much inferior opponents to Notre Dame. Uh, and yet the Fighting Irish struggled against them early on in the first quarter and the second quarter, that first half. They can't afford to do that. Obviously, Clemson, again, the toughest test they faced all year long. Clemson, way better, light years better than those four opponents we just mentioned. But if Notre Dame comes out sluggish, they find themselves down 10, 
14 early to the Tigers, it's not going to be looking pretty for the rest of the game. So that's the key for Notre Dame. Pressure DJ Uyunglele. Shut down Amari Rodgers. And then, of course, start strong. Start fast. Set the tone early, especially with you having home field advantage. Again, I know it's not going to be as great as having that sold-out crowd in South Bend, but anything is better than nothing. I certainly would not want to be playing at night in Death Valley, even with limited capacity. So having it in South Bend, again, a place where Notre Dame has won 22 straight games, could go a long way in this one. So what's the final outlook for this game? What is going to happen Saturday night in South Bend? You're going to have the number 8 team in the country and the number 5 team in the country play at 2.30 Central Time, Florida, Georgia. Right after that, you're going to roll into a top 4 showdown, basically what it feels like a college football playoff showdown uh, in South Bend. So you're going to have back-to-back top 10 showdowns on one day. I mean, that doesn't happen. We're very, very lucky to have something like that happen. So what's going to happen in our second game of the week, in our second Top 10 showdown of Week 10. We've got Notre Dame pulling off the upset. We've got Notre Dame start pulling off the upset. Here's why. I think the Fighting Irish do start strong. I think Brian Kelly has his team ready to go. They're fired up. For years, we have heard that Notre Dame cannot win the big games. You make it to a New Year's Six Bowl game, you can't do it. You make it to the playoff, you can't do it. You make it to the national championship. Remember, back in 2012, you can't do it. Notre Dame has failed in the big games, and people are writing them off now, even with the backup quarterback for Clemson, because the Fighting Irish have a history of choking. They don't do it on Saturday. They're tired of it. They're ready to prove the doubters wrong. I think Clark Lee comes out with a big defensive game plan here in South Bend. They shut down that Clemson offense. Well, I think they're going to make Clemson struggle throughout the game. I really do. I think Clemson is going to struggle a little bit throughout the course of this game. DJ Uyunglele looked great against Boston College. Again, Notre Dame is not Boston College. They are a lot better than the Eagles. Home field advantage, a very solid defense, the backup quarterback for Clemson, all those things combined. I think the Fighting Irish take advantage of the opportunity given to them. They get the win at home against the top-ranked team in the country. They remain in the top four, and more than likely this will set up a rematch in the ACC title game. Where if Notre Dame wins that, Clemson's out of the playoff. And if they lose, the Fighting Irish have a very strong case to still remain in the top four if, of course, that is their only loss. This game is huge. It's monumental. Again, it sets the tone for the rest of the conference. It sets the tone for the college football playoff. It sets the tone for the rest of the year. We're going to get some clarity in the top ten by the end of Saturday night. We're going to get it in Jacksonville. We're going to get it in South Bend. But I like the Fighting Irish to take care of business and for a little bit, shake up the college football world. So guys, thank you so much for watching us here at the Gridiron Expert on YouTube. So many big games coming your way on Saturday night, Saturday afternoon. I mean, it's going to be a fun-filled day of college football. One uh, filled with upsets, filled with excitement. One that's really going to separate the contenders from the pretenders. So, so much to watch out for. Again, check out our previous videos uh, if you have not already. Of course, check out everything down in that description below as well. If you love college football, this is the place for you. We've got exclusive content on Patreon. We've got exclusive content here on YouTube you don't want to miss. Uh, we've got exclusive content over on BetNow. Use that promo code uh, in that link down in the description below uh, to go use our promo code on BetNow to get that 100% sign-up bonus. So much extra college football analysis and content for you guys, solely for you guys, down in that description. So make sure to go check it out. And once again, guys, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to continue to like, comment, subscribe, and enjoy your college football Saturday. And we'll see you next time right here on the Gridiron Expert.